right. Welcome back to the Lunch Table Food for Thought. I'm Nico Blitz. Shout out to my next guest. We got CYN in the building, Kai Cash. What's popping? Yeah, yeah. What's going on, man? How's everything? Everything is well, man, over here in California. How are you, bro? Because I know coronavirus has been going crazy over there in New York. Um, I'm actually doing pretty good. I, I take care of myself. I make sure I, I drink oil of oregano and... I got some sea moss and I'm exercising every day. Like my you know, oregano and sea moss are crazy. I'm not playing with Corona. I don't want that. Were, were you on this? It sounds like you eat and drink healthy. Nah, you know what's crazy? I don't. Like for the past two weeks, because I just got to New York actually. So for like the past two weeks, I've just been bugging out. I've been eating nonsense. I drink a lot of water though, but. Like, I, I've been just drinking lately in general, going to bars and shit like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just having. <laughs> He's like, man, I've been indoors work. way too long, bro. Yeah, and I had to get up out of there. But other than that, I make sure I take care of myself. Like, I make sure everything is balanced. Like, this morning, I went to go work out for, like, two hours. Every, if not every day, then every other day, I make sure I go work out on top of all this, the, the oils and things that i'm taking that's what's up man so but you got you got workouts you got the rap shit like you your days must be pretty packed what's your daily schedule look like um i get up early like now i don't know i randomly wake up at like 7 a.m but i don't usually stay up i'm not gonna lie so i will wake up check check something random like my email or something and then i go to sleep and then wake up again at like nine i may go work out depends on how i'm feeling if not then i'll start like figuring out what i want to like what i want to do today and when when i say what i want to do it's usually in terms of creativity because mm. a lot of people don't know that i make a lot well i damn not make all of my like graphics and cover arts oh. and yeah like all of that stuff so whenever if i don't know how to do something i'm spending my time on youtube learning how to do it like was it it was yesterday i think yeah yesterday morning yesterday morning i um i downloaded adobe after effects because i was trying to figure out how to make a 3d logo a revolving 3d logo mm. just for my um i just dropped a new single it's for my my audio i put it i put an audio only video on youtube and i wanted it to be a revolving moon and i figured it out it took me oh so you did the video yeah, no, yeah. no remorse no like audio only video on your page yep that's dope, bro. Man, look at you, this one man band. Yeah. <laughs> Cuts cost like yeah. crazy. Okay, and so I just me, like I like learning. So let me ask you, do you do you produce your own stuff too? No, that's the only thing uh, I Ah, okay, about. okay. But um that's next. That's next for me. Yeah. I was about to say, man, between you obviously like rapping and doing your own graphics, like if you were doing the production and whatnot too, it's like bro, it'd be crazy. Powerhouse powerhouse super powerhouse yeah man so uh you know as i was mentioning to you like before the interview i actually had uh your cousin nico brim on here shout out to cyn like you you guys are dope man you guys are like i feel like i'll give you guys a couple of years before everybody knows about the cyn collective yeah. Yeah. But how, did, how did you guys even start cyn you know it was crazy it was like an accident one day we were it was the summertime probably like 2000 mm-hmm. 11 2012 and we was doing i forgot what it was that we were doing it was just something crazy like we were just kids we was doing something crazy and somebody just called us like what cyn originally meant like they called us that it was just like yo y'all don't cyn's like and we was just like you know what we're gonna i like how that sound like we all like how it sounds so we was just like nah we're gonna we're gonna just call ourselves cyn and then as time progressed it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. We started doing everything under the CYN umbrella. So it turned into a real corporation. So now it's just like CYN is us, all of us. But yeah, I mean, I think you guys kind of got like King Combs. I know you guys got NBA players in CYN too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, they be getting everybody in here. Yeah, man. You know, we just, we're just a welcoming group and we just have genuine relationships with a lot of people. So even if they're not really CYN, the associate, the associates list is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Who Who is the most recent um, associate? 
CYN's most recent associate. Hmm, I that's gotta, a good one. Put on, bro. Oh, Sway, Sway. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's now that I think about it. That's Sway. Facts. Shout out to Sway. By the way, you you oh, and Nico both killed your freestyles on Sway, thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you. That's what uh, that's what the affiliation came about. That mm-hmm. day, we Sway was just like, nah, I'm I'm CYN. We was just like, yeah. Facts. <laughs> Get your ass over. Like, yeah, let's go. Why hey, not? So you know, I, I have a question, especially because you know, I'm I'm watching your freestyle on Sway in the Morning, your five fingers of death. You're going in. Um, I can't help but think but that the art of freestyling is definitely lost though. Because yeah, you know, some over. people you can definitely tell like it's written. Other people, yeah. it's like you know it's written, but you know, like yourself, it's performed so well to where it's like, okay, this doesn't seem like yeah. it's, you know, like written or whatnot. But it's like, what what's your take on like the art of freestyling and where everything's going in terms of that in hip hop? In all honesty, I'm I, I like it in general because even if it's written or not written, we just get to hear what the act the artist like, what your content is off of a song like. Can you really rap? Do you really have the ability to, like, are you a lyricist? Are you just a, a cool rapper? Do you suck? Are you, like, like, yeah, it's just like, for <laughs> me, it's just like, nah, what, what, I like, I like watching freestyles. I've always been into freestyles. Like, God bless the dead. Juice World. we can tell, we can all tell that he wasn't, like, none of his stuff was written, but he was hard. Like, he, when his freestyling ability was crazy. crazy. Nobody could take that away from him because it was just like, anytime, you hear a freestyle coming from him. It's just like, he's just like, yeah, he stopped. You just know when somebody's not, when it's not a written. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And then you have people like, I don't know if you ever seen the King Los freestyle. I heard a King Los freestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's another person that he has a great writing ability, but he does things like he'll tell you to throw words at him and he'll rap with every word you throw at him like I just like it's it's a sport for me personally so I feel like it's in a good it, it's in a good space it just depends on who's freestyling mm. to, to kind of to show you like okay was that worth watching or was that just like complete nonsense I would never tune back in <laughs> <laughs> like, just going right. hell off topic and she's like what the fuck is he talking about yeah like all right yeah I'm, I'm, I'm zoning out but now nah, freestyling is in I feel like it's personally in a good space okay well, you know, you considering it as a sport, I'm assuming you've been doing it for a long time. You've been yeah. rapping for a minute now. When did you start? Really? I started rapping when I was three, really. But, you know, as a, as a young three? kid. Three? Three. I made my first song when I was seven. I, I might have it. Hold on. Oh, shit. We getting the exclusive. Yeah, no, nah, I might actually have it on my. Ah, uh, no, nah, I don't have it on my. Nah, that's all good, bro. Damn, what, what was the song it? called? Um, we you didn't even give it a title. You, you just <laughs> made just, it. it was, yeah, it was just our names, like. But that shit was hard. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know if I can curse. Sorry, but nah, that's all good. Nah, it was that song is tough, super tough. I'm gonna see. So, if I can so started at around three. Made your first song around seven. Seven, yeah. You know, and then from there, the rest is just history. Yeah, just so you were, going. like, rapping in high school and whatnot, huh? Battling people? Mm-hmm. Not really. You know so crazy? In high school, I was, like, more so, sh- like, shelled. I, I was kind of scared mm-hmm. to, like, broadcast my talents a lot. I didn't, I didn't really start going crazy with the music until, like, maybe my junior, senior year in high school. And then I started to open up and I started releasing more music and figuring out how to get my stuff on DSPs and SoundCloud mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That's when I kind of like oh, really opened the door for myself and just came out. And I was just, I'm rapping whenever, wherever. And I'm just having fun with it. I'm loving what I was doing. But it was more so the end of high school, college. I was big. Like I was, I'm really, really, this is my, this is my life. I'm a musician. Like I'm an artist. Mm, okay okay so what so was it really just like understanding what a little bit of the business aspect that made you really want to go full force um that and it was just me it was it was me just being in my own head I just had to gain that confidence of being able to just like 
go out there and, and really just do it because I was good at it. I know how to write a verse. I know how to make a song, but it was just like, when it came to broadcasting it, I was just like, nah. I was scared of criticism. Mm-hmm. I was, I was real, like I was really scared of criticism. But, and it's still something that bothers me kind of to this day, but it's just like, it doesn't bother me to the point where I'll, I'll not perform somewhere or something like that. Like, yeah. I was just like, all right, it's a critic. Well, I think um, when it comes to criticism, you have one of two things to do. One, you can either shell up because you are fearful of the criticism, or two, once you get the critiques on you, you learn from it and you learn yeah. how to grow. Exactly. That, and that's how I look at it now. Now that I'm old enough, it's just like, all right, if somebody doesn't like something, I may take into consideration what it is that they don't like. But a lot of the times, not even the boast. Most people like what I'm bringing to the table. So it's just like, I don't really have to deal with too much criticism nowadays. Mm-hmm. But it still comes, nonetheless. You know, I was actually going through your website, too. And you actually have a book that's out right now, Tranquil, Overcoming the Experience. Um, yeah. And the book details your experiences with anxiety. Mm-hmm. So were you, how early in your life were you experiencing anxiety? Because based off what you're telling me now, it sounds like it could have been as early as high school. You know, it's crazy. I never thought about it like that because I didn't really experience anxiety until I was like 18, 19. Mm-hmm. But it, it could have been. It could have been something because a lot of the times when people are dealing with mental health issues, one of the biggest signs is them feeling like they're okay when it's just like, everybody else is just like, no, you're not. But until you really see that you're not okay, you're going to just have that wall over just like that. I'm okay. wall. but it was like, I was, I was 18. It was my fresh, the end of my freshman year in college. And, and a situation had occurred, something that just never really happened to me. And it, it put me on a, like, put me in real defense mode. Like I was, I'm in college and by myself, despite me having friends, it's like, I don't have no family with me. It's just, so I, I had to go to kind of, I had to go through a, a kind of like an, a real adult moment. You feel me? And it was, it wasn't, it wasn't really scary, but it was just something that, like I said, I never dealt with before. So it was just like, Oh, what happened? This, if you don't mind, this, it was just a situation where like I had got kicked out of my dorms for fighting and, and somebody had ran into my room and, and, and took a bunch of things. Well, I wasn't in there at the time, but it was just like it, the, the situation, it wasn't, it was crazy because the situation, it wasn't scary. You feel me? It wasn't like a, 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 a startling, a horror story. It was just like, oh no, nah, this is real. I never dealt with nothing like this. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. This is, that's one of the craziest places. So for me to go to college and then start dealing with having to, to, to fight and, and, Mm. do all types of things of that nature it was just like nah this is crazy and then it just got to me because it's just like damn i'm really like i really got to figure this out on my own i'm now i'm an adult like this is really adult Uh, they say college is like your first step into being an adult but it was just like really yeah you're an adult you have to figure out everything that's going on mind you it's like two weeks of school left at this time i'm getting kicked out of my dorm like it's just like what like how is this happening we we only got two weeks of school left so it kind of got to me and then i was having those moments where i would just feel like heart palpitations or just it it, all the symptoms of anxiety but i didn't know what it was at first so i would go to hospitals and stuff like that just to check on myself shortness of breath and then they'd be like oh you have anxiety they try to give me medication and stuff like that but i don't like meds i'm not taking no meds if Mm -hmm. i took a med it probably was a day but other than that, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is not for me. I'm going to just figure it out on my own. And then I started to figure it out as time progressed. And then I just wrote the book about it because I was able to overcome the experience. So how did you overcome the experience? Many tactics, which are in, indeed in the book. But um, it's just like I did first was just getting in tune with, like, funny things, being able to watch funny movies and be around friends, just to take your mind off the anxiety. That's really the, that's really what the mental health, the mental issues are. It's like your mind, you have, you have to, you have to be able to control your mind and not let your mind control you. So I try to do things like that, work out exercising because it, 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 it just boosts a lot of endurance and stuff like that. Um, writing journaling was, was very important how I felt in the times and then like 
burning the pages or throwing the pages out after mm-hmm. writing everything I felt or even keeping the pages just to have a whole like a whole book of my whole experience in general and then looking back later once this is like I, I dealt with it I actually went to therapy also but therapy didn't work for me because I just felt like it wasn't enough time in therapy I was mm-hmm. going to a therapist once a week and I'm dealing with anxiety every single day so it was just like I'm just gonna figure this out on my own. Like, I even took up meditating. Like, I started to meditate, listening to like ten hours in meditation music on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, I always pray, so prayer always worked for me. But even speaking to like family members, every it, I took it's, it's just a bunch of different routes that I would, was taking at the same time because I was really determined to to relieve myself of all those those feelings because it just wasn't something I was fond of, and then I figured it out. Yeah. Well, I think what's great about, I mean, first of all, like, congratulations for overcoming your anxiety. That's, that's huge, bro. And I appreciate you sharing everything with me. But like, the fact that you had, or you realized that there are so many different things you could do from meditation to talking to a family member to even testing out a therapist, right? Yeah. Or, you know, working out like, you leave no excuse for trying to overcome any personal battles that you went through. Yeah, exactly. And to me, that's something that all of us should really have a mind state towards. Like, you know, like no matter what your situation is, there's always some way that you can get past this situation without resorting to medication, without resorting to like any other crazy shit, you know? Exactly. And that's, that's what I was big on. I was just like, I want to figure this out on my own. I was just determined. Yeah. Well, shout out to you, man. That's, that's crazy. Congratulations Thank you. again. Um, your 2019 album, bro, Birth in the Burrow. My favorite record. Well, I initially, I was looking through the track list and I was like, oh shit, he got Pusha T on the track. <laughs> so, you know, I, I obviously listened to, a, I listened to that record, but I was like, bro, like, I don't know. Guy Cash went super fucking hard, dog. Like the the between the beat, between you getting a first and a third verse, and Push really complimenting your first verse too. I was like, yo, this is a really dope song, bro. Thank you, thank you. Good looking. How'd that Good. song come about? Um, craziest thing is, I used to do a lot of freestyles. That's crazy that we just spoke about freestyles. I actually used to upload freestyles on my Instagram page frequently like once every two weeks just to just to make sure I still had it like I like writing and stuff like that and Pusha T was one of those people that actually was somebody that tuned into my freestyle so like probably the end of 2018 early 2019 I had posted a freestyle and Pusha commented on it and I was just like oh no I gotta see if we could work yeah (laughs) so I just I just hit him up I'm like yo good looking for you know the support we definitely gonna work one day. Da, 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 da. He was just like, nah, for sure. And then he, on top of that, him and my dad are friends. Like they mm-hmm. know each other, so it was it was just cool. So something in the water last year, I think it was March or April. I was at something in the water, and I was um backstage, and I had seen Push. I'm just like, yo, what up? Like it was our first time meeting each other. I was like, yo, I, I think I got a song for you. Like we gotta do some shit. He was like, no, just let's do it like get it to me as soon as you can let's let's just make it happen i'm like i right, bet so in the process of me making the track list i had the no handout song but the craziest thing is with that song i didn't write i didn't i didn't write anything for that song like i didn't write the hook i didn't write my verse like it was just all the beat came on i was in my friend's crib and i'm just flowing like oh. everything just- yeah, no, no, I, I didn't get it. <laughs> no, because initially I thought you meant like somebody else wrote your shit. No, <laughs> hell no. No, nah. it was just like me, me flowing while the, while the beat is playing. I'm just rambling. Even my first verse was a lot of ramble. Like, that's why I wasn't so lyrically like driven, but I did that. And I'm just like, yo, I feel like this might be a hard song for Push. Send it to him. He was like, nah, this is it. He was like, I'm on this ASAP. Like two, three days passed, he sent he sent a, a picture of his notepad with his verse on it, right? 
damn. So I'm like, oh, no, nah, it's real. And then, like, the next day, he sent this verse over, and I was just tight because I'm a, I'm a lyricist, so I'm just like, oh, hell no. It's no way I'm about to let Push kill me on my record. Yeah. So I went back. I'm like, all right, my third verse is going to just be a little harder than my first verse. But he was just like, nah, the first verse. He's like, the first verse, you killed that first verse. And I was just yeah. like, hi, right, man. Bruh, Kai, it sounds like you weren't trying to get a uh, control. You weren't trying to get that control verse on your shit. Not at all. I was not letting it happen. <laughs> I was not. Bro, when I tell you I was not with it, I'm like, yikes. I'm like, nah, it's over. I'm not letting push. Ooh. I'm like, I'm not letting push do me like this on my own, on my own song. Crazy thing is, I had sent him a different version with a whole another first verse. Mm. It was more lyrical, and he was like, "It's hard, but nah, don't don't change nothing." So I was like, "All right, bet." So I just circled back, and the rest is just history. Is there anything that you picked up from that particular experience? Um. Hmm. Probably the biggest thing that I could say I picked up was to to go with your go with your gut instinct. You feel me? Like even even when I played it for people, it was just like, nah, my original first verse, the first the verse that I actually put out, everybody was like, nah, you went crazy on your first verse. And in my mind, I'm just like, no, I really didn't. But mm. I guess it's just like Sometimes you have to just be a little a little more simple. Especially nowadays, I'm like I'd like I like to use a lot of words and do do stuff like that, but I guess that first verse was just it related to a lot of people. So a lot of people was just like, "Nah, you just went crazy on this song." So that's probably the biggest thing I took from that whole experience. Yeah, cuz then you sound so you sound so raw and passionate on it and like if I'm being honest, it's like you know, as you were saying, it wasn't like the most lyrical, but then once you once I was just listening to it, I was like, yo, like he's going in right now. <laughs> Good looking. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy you kept that verse on there, bro. Um yeah. but you know, you got the song No Remorse out right now. Samples uh The Footprints by T O K. Dope record. How'd that record come yeah. about? Craziest thing is it was during quarantine. I probably made that song in like April. Mm-hmm. And this was before the George Floyd incident. This was before all of this stuff. So me, I like to reflect the times in all my music. I like to talk about what I'm going through, what I see going on around me, experiences that I've had. So one day we was just in my cousin's crib and it was me. It was, we had a, we have a, like a a little studio set up there and we had a producer over there as well. So I was just, I was making like trillers at the time and I decided to use the actual footprint song for a trailer. And then I'm like, nah, nobody ever sampled the song. Mm. So I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's sit down and actually sample this, but let's make it modern. So I just let him do like everything when it came to the production. I told him what I wanted, how I wanted it. And he just did it. And then I just started, I started writing and I laid the song down and I'm just like, nah, I feel like this should be the next release. And then, on top of that, the Black Lives Matter thing started to to erupt. So it was just like, okay, this seems like the the best song that I could possibly release because anything else right now is such a mm-hmm. a sensitive time. It's just like it can it can it can get rubbed the wrong way. Uh, it's crazy how crazy and sensitive that the time is right now. So with quarantine not knowing how to release music. And then we had the, the, the Black Lives Matter, George Floyd situation. It was just like, damn, as a creative, you can only release music that reflects the time right now. You can't, you can't come out here with no BS. Like, nobody wants to hear it right now. Yeah. So if it's not a moment where it's relatable and it's emotion-based and it's, like, reflective and people can actually play it and, and, and and match it with a with a current situation and it's no need to drop it. So I just felt like no remorse was just the perfect and the, the sample alone is just like this is gonna catch so many ears because that song is so crazy. hmm So I just felt like this was the perfect time and so far it's been it's been good. When when did I drop it? Yesterday. Damn. A couple days ago. <laughs> well Wait. No, yesterday. Wow. Oh yesterday. 
I dropped the song yesterday. That's crazy. <laughs> no, wow. It feels like it was like four days ago. Yeah, right. Well, so, well, I mean, I really like the fact that, you know, you created that song back in April because I really like what you were saying, how rappers or musicians especially, they should be reflecting the time about what's going on, like, at this moment of time. What I don't like is when people do it for clout. Yeah. For instance, like when Kobe when Kobe died earlier this year, like maybe the next day people were dropping R.I.P. Kobe songs, and I'm like, I don't know about this, man. You know, yeah, that's a that's a clout moment, and that's another thing too. Like I like to be genuine with mine. That's why I didn't. That's why I didn't. I wasn't dropping too much music as soon as things started to occur. It's like I'm taking my time with it. Of course, I can't just sit still because this is my this is my career. This is how I make money. This is my passion. Yeah. So I have to release content, but it was just like, I have to release content that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And this was probably the most sensible content I could have released at the moment. Yeah. It seems like everything just came at a, without trying to sound insensitive, everything just came at a perfect time for no remorse. Exactly. And it's natural. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me being a Filipino American who absolutely loves hip hop, right? First of all, hip hop is definitely black culture came from your side of the United States for sure. Um, you know, I've, I've always come to grips. Like, you know, I will never truly understand the black experience for a black person who lives in America. So, you know, from your perspective, like, what's it like being a black man in America? It's definitely difficult. I feel like that's the, the best way to, to describe it because it's like, not even just being a black man, just being black in general, because we're set back so many years. And this is this this current situation helped me realize what systematic oppression really was. Because it's like no matter how you put it, in order for blacks to level up, we have so much we have to do first. Because in, in every scenario, no matter what the situation is, unless it's something that we make on our own, it's like we're set back. When we have a black billionaire millionaire if they make certain decisions it's easier to, for them, it's easier for them to be blackballed and everything gets wiped away it's easier for them to be sent to jail on false accusations or just whatever the negative narrative was in their lifetime that's what everybody remembers right mm. and it sucks because we see it happen every day every day every week every month every year and on top of that it's just like outside of classism you have environmental status right the whole redlining thing which is another thing i just learned about we're put in these in these in these these environments where everything is damn near poverty stricken that's why all hoods have kennedy fried chickens next to the liquor stores next to the mom and pop delis next to whatever the, the, the statistical, stereotypical scenario may be. And then outside of that, we have to, we basically live on eggshells in the sense of a lot of things that, uh, there's a lot of things that we can't do that other people can do and get away with. Like, I forgot what movie I was just watching. Um, no, 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 I was watching 13 Reasons Why, right? And they had a scene where the whole school was rioting against like the police in the, in the town or something like that. And it was just like, it was so subtle how the riot was. It was just like, everybody was having their way, doing whatever they wanted to do. But we all know the narrative for a black riot or if it was a black scenario, it's just not even to go too deep. It's just like everything for us is harder, which is why we have to, we have to work as hard, not saying, nobody else works hard because everybody works hard in their own way. But it's like, we have so much more to show and prove. We have so much more trauma attached to us. This is why black on black crime is just so crazy. Even things like that. You have situations where we scream black lives matter. And then when you go to the hood, that black person killed the black person from the block that he doesn't like because of their territorial history. Mm. You feel me? Black people don't know how to really reward a successful black person. A successful black person goes back to their neighborhoods. They're on 
on watch. You have to you have to be attentive. You have to pay attention to everything that's going on because you have those people that still love you from your neighborhood, but then you have a lot of people that is like, why you never came back to the neighborhood? Why you didn't take us with you? Why you didn't do this for us? Why you didn't do that? You a sellout. You this, you that. It's just so much embedded in our brains that we have to kind of like it's gonna take it's gonna take a it's gonna take a, t- a long time and it takes everyone individually to want to realize that it starts with us you mm-hmm. feel me it starts with us no matter how we put it and with us it starts in yourself it's individualism you have to be able to if you have an op outside you got to be able to be like you know what it's not even worth that because I'm going to jail, uh, I can't afford bail, I can't, it's everything, we have, we have to think about every single thing, ways we move, even with driving around, like, my girlfriend, she's, she's very opinionated and boisterous, and she, she's not scared of anything, she's fearless, and one day we were driving past police, I was just in the passenger side, and she, she, she had did something, it wasn't nothing too crazy, it was like she just said something out loud, and the police, like, directly looked into the car and I was just like telling her like yo you gotta chill mm-hmm. but with her being the person she is we get into an argument but I just had to let her understand like yo you have to understand it's different because of who we are you're a black female I'm a black male in the passenger seat although the police can't do she was like the police can't just come and search the car the police can't do I'm like we know they can't but that doesn't mean they won't mm-hmm. you understand because because of who we are, because of the, the color of our skin, they will easily, they can't do it. We see, a, we see every day what police can and cannot do. They do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, oh, they get fired. They're on paid leave. Oh, he's suspended for three months. She's suspended for three months. There's no real justice. So that situation in, in general, it, that was one of the situations that really had me like just... I was just upset because I was just like, damn, we really have to live this way. Like, when I have a kid, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna have to tell my child, like, listen, these are the things you can and these are the things you can't do. You shouldn't do rap. I'm not gonna tell you you can't do this, but you shouldn't do this. Do this on your time. Don't do this publicly or just be just be aware of everything. Because even, even the privileged black children, it's just like, you're black at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And that's just the, that's, it sucks, but that's just the reality of it. And and I'm 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 very happy at where we've come with the whole marching and everybody being a little a little more just tapped in with each other and being for each other. Even though it's, it, it didn't take a whole turn for the better, it's like we see the progress in the situation, and it's just it's difficult, but. We strong, so we know how to get through a lot of things. We have to, but we have to, we have to, we have to be able to, to to change what we have at home first before we can even expect anybody else to change anything for us. And that's just how I feel about it in general. Amen to that, man. I think that um, you know, twenty twenty, rest in peace, George Floyd, rest in peace, Breonna Taylor, and everyone else. But I think that twenty twenty, especially because of these deaths and many more, I think we're starting to see a turn in the yeah. way it's getting written. We're obviously, we're nowhere near the change that we want, but at least from my perspective, I see that the change is like starting for sure. Yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. Like I, I see certain things that are different now. It's just like, it's even from, from the, the perspective of, creators like music is different and just people in in the day-to-day people are less like i I don't know how to how to really put it but in certain situations i'm not gonna say everywhere people are are less hostile in certain places like it's just more of a we need to unite kind of persona that that that's coming about and even when you see the little things like certain laws are being passed and Little, little minuscule efforts mm-hmm. that, of course, are going to lead to to better progress. But it's it's cool to see stuff like that with, with with the politics. I'm not a political person at all, but seeing those slight political changes, it's like ah, uh, it's cool. It's a good gesture, but it's just like we're not going to shut up because you decided oh, yeah, to sure. allow us to. You feel me? Yeah. And that's sure. one thing that we as a people have to 
all get into our brains as well. It's just like, we can't let them, we can't continue to let them just throw bones and just like, all right, here, here you go. Now just let's go back to normal. No. Well, you know, because our normal is crazy. We know I, I was saying that quarantine actually happened at a perfect time um, because literally once the, uh, once the marches uh, and the protests came together, I was thinking to myself, well, what's different this time is that people don't got work on Monday. Exactly. People don't got work on Tuesday. You know, tough. The, the protests and whatnot have still continued for the past month or so. Now the problem is don't let this moment last only for a month. Yep. You know what I mean? Let the protests, let the knowledge, let, let the expansion of knowledge continue after June, after July, yeah. after August, exactly. after 2020. I feel the same way, and I had tweeted something like that. I was just like, um, I forgot what it was. You know, I don't remember what the tweet was, but it went, it went up. It went crazy. And then it's, it's a new day and age now where everybody doesn't have to be front, front line. Everybody doesn't have to go protest. Everybody doesn't have to, you feel me, be an activist. It's, it's so many different ways to just help the cause, spread mm-hmm. knowledge via social media, you know? Just it's, however you feel the need, go create some art that's dedicated to what we have going on. Just donate to some to some some charities. Donate to start start supporting your black businesses. You know, just it's it's so many different ways that we can attack getting our point across the right way. And I applaud people that protest. I applaud people that are activists that just turn over a whole new leaf and just want to dedicate their lives to bringing the justice. But we can't. We can't we can't critique those who aren't doing that because we don't see what they are doing actually. Feel me? And even even things like that, it's like we get to see people's socials grow in the sense of like now I'm gonna be this type of poster or be this type of social person. Mm. It, it, everything is just different now. I, I, I like the change. I like to see that it's, it at least is some change. But more change is coming for sure. Amen to that, man. Well, Kai Cash, thank you for stopping by the lunch table, man. Oh, before I forget, man, um, you know, is No Remorse attached to an album or is it just going to be a single? Yes. Actually, craziest thing is I was supposed to promote the project yesterday, but I got a haircut. I just decided to promote myself. Yeah. Um, but I'm actually coming out with a project called Dollar Sign for the S. And... I don't know if it's going to be the end of this year or top of 2021, but it's pretty much done. No Remorse was just like a single number one. I'm going to drop another single with a video and then full-blown project mode. But yes, No Remorse is definitely attached to Dollar Sign for the S. And I'm actually dropping No Remorse merch in like, what's today, the 8th? Like the 10th, like two days. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. I'm gonna I'm go DM you. I'm gonna need one of them joints. Yeah, no, no, I got you. It's gonna be fire. Trust me. My guy, Kai Cash. Let me get you on the Instagram one time, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, Kai Cash, the lunch table. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, it's lit. <laughs> This is Nico Blitz, the lunch table Kai Cash. Thank you again for stopping by the lunch table, bro. I appreciate you. Yes, CYN. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. CYN. <laughs> Let him know.